In order for multicellular organisms to actually function effectively and efficiently, the individual cells must be able to communicate with one another, and this is known as intracellular communication. Now, the way that our cells communicate with one another is via chemicals, via special types of molecules. So a single cell can basically release a chemical, the chemical can travel to a different cell and create some type of change in that cell. So it can activate that cell or in some cases it can inhibit that cell. Now we actually already spoke about one type of communications uh, system. We discussed the nervous system of the human body and the nervous system uses a special type of chemical known as the neurotransmitter in intracellular communication. So the neurotransmitter basically travels over a, or over a very short distance basically across the synapse between the neuron and our adjacent cell and the neurotransmitter are basically only binds to specific cells and it creates a very quick and rapid response but this response is relatively short-lived it only takes place over several seconds now we're going to discuss a different type of system our communication system in the body known as the endocrine system and the endocrine system creates a special type of chemical known as a hormone now the hormone is released by the cell into the bloodstream or into the lymph system and the hormone unlike the neurotransmitter actually travels over a very long distance throughout the entire body before it actually affects the target cell. Now neurotransmitters are very specific to the type of cell that they bind to but hormones are not that specific that means they can bind to many different types of cells and some of these cells can be affected in an activating manner whilst other cells can basically be inhibited by that same hormone. So unlike neurotransmitters, which basically act over very short distances and act very quickly and are short-lived, our hormones travel over very long distances. They act relatively slowly, so over hours or days or even longer, and they basically can affect the organism over long term. Now, the endocrine system consists of special types of glands that produce our hormones. These are known as endocrine glands. Endocrine glands basically means our hormones are released into the bloodstream or into our lymph system. Now, this is in contrast to a different type of system that uses different types of glands. This system is known as the exocrine system and it uses exocrine glands. These exocrine glands basically release the chemicals into our ducts and these ducts carry these chemicals into the external environment. And one example of an exocrine gland is the sweat gland, also known as our sudoriferous gland. And this sudoriferous gland basically creates sweat. It releases the sweat through a duct and onto our skin, so onto our external environment. So this is basically exocrine glands, but endocrine glands are found in the endocrine system. Now, before we discuss the different types of hormones that are produced by the endocrine glands, let's discuss the three ways by which our cells can basically communicate with one another using chemicals, using molecules. Now, we basically have an autocrine signaling pathway, we have a paracrine signaling pathway, and we have the endocrine signaling pathway that is used by the endocrine system. Now, an autocrine signaling basically means that our cell produces some type of chemical, that cell releases that chemical into the extracellular fluid, and then that chemical binds onto that same cell that released that chemical and creates some type of change. And some examples of this will be seen in the immune system when we'll discuss the immune system of the human body. Now the second type of signaling pathway is our paracrine signaling pathway and in this case our cell creates a chemical, that chemical is released into the extracellular fluid and then that chemical travels to nearby cells, to cells 
found in close proximity and affects those cells. And one example of such a chemical is the prostaglandin. And we'll discuss these chemicals in detail when we'll discuss these in the next several lectures. Now, the final type of pathway is our endocrine signaling pathway. This is the pathway that is actually used by the endocrine system. In this pathway, the cell creates our chemical, the hormone, and releases it into the bloodstream or the lymph system. And then that hormone travels over a very long distance. It circulates in our blood before it actually binds onto our target cell and affects that target itself in some way or form. So the endocrine system uses the endocrine signaling pathway. It contains endocrine glands that synthesize our hormones. But how many hormones do we have? Well, we have many different hormones and all these different types of hormones that we're going to discuss in the next several lectures can be broken down into three categories. We have peptide hormones that are formed from, that are formed from proteins. We have our steroid hormones that are formed from cholesterol. And we have tyrosine derivative hormones that are formed from tyrosine amino acids. So let's discuss these three different types of hormones. Let's begin with our peptide hormone. So the peptide hormone is formed in the rough endoplasm reticulum of our cell and then moves onto the Golgi apparatus. Inside the Golgi complex, the peptide hormone can basically be modified in some way or form. For example, we can add a sugar component onto the peptide hormone. Now, once we modify the peptide hormone, it travels into our bloodstream or into our lymph system. And because the bloodstream consists predominantly of water, and because our peptide hormone is, me is made from peptide, that means peptide hormones are water soluble, and that means they can easily dissolve inside the bloodstream and do not actually need to use any type of carrier protein. So these peptide hormones can travel in the bloodstream by themselves. Now eventually these peptide hormones will arrive at the target cell. Now these peptide hormones are water soluble. They are not lipid soluble and that means they cannot actually pass across the plasma membrane of the target cell because the plasma membrane is made predominantly of hydrophobic tails of hydrophobic fatty acids. So that basically means peptide hormones bind onto receptor proteins found on the plasma membrane of the target cell. And once they bind, they can create some type of change. For example, they can open up a channel protein that will change an ion concentration, or they can basically use some type of secondary messenger system that uses some type of secondary messenger, such as cyclic AMP, to create some form of change. Now the second type of hormone that we're going to discuss is our steroid hormone. Now the steroid hormone is basically synthesized from, uh, from cholesterol or from some type of lipid. And our steroid hormone is synthesized either in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum or in the mitochondria of the cell. Now steroid hormones are lipid soluble and that means they cannot dissolve in the blood. And so they actually require carrier proteins to carry them to their target cell. So once inside the bloodstream, the steroid hormones need carrier proteins. Now, once these steroid hormones actually arrive at a target cell, they can easily transport themselves. They can easily move across the cell membrane, and that's because these are lipid soluble. Now, once inside a cytosol of our cell, these steroid hormones will basically bind onto receptor proteins found in the cytosol, and then the receptor protein hormone complex can, uh, can then travel into the new 
nucleus of our cell and once inside the nucleus the steroid hormone can basically create or induce some type of transcriptional change. So that means it can basically induce the synthesis of certain proteins that are needed by the cell at that given moment in time. Now the final type of hormone we're going to discuss is our tyrosine derivative hormone or simply the tyrosine hormone. So the tyrosine hormone is a type of hormone that is synthesized either in the cytosol by special types of enzymes or in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So these protein or these hormones can basically either be water soluble in which case they do not need any type of carrier protein in the bloodstream and they bind onto receptor proteins on the plasma membrane of the target cell or they can also be lipid soluble in which case they bind to receptors in the nucleus of that cell and they create some type of tra transcriptional chain. So these are the three different types of hormones. We have three categories. We have peptide hormones, steroid hormones, and tyrosine hormones that are used by the endocrine system of our body.